I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Okay, so let me show you around the food for us and let you know what it looks like after having over 100 degree weather during the summer in North Texas. And yesterday was 99 degrees. Today is going to be 98. And basically what I do is just try to keep everything alive until the weather cools to the lower 90s, which hopefully and prayerfully we'll have that next week so i'm gonna start right over here you can see i have some lemongrass that's being partially uh shaded by this over 20 foot high jujube tree the ladder's still there from when my son harvested uh all the juju jujubes until about right there and we left all the ones at the top for the squirrels and the birds and as you can see they got them all next to the jujube i have a elderberry bush they grow up like trees and they have hard wood but they're actually bushes and i will be cutting down this uh elderberry bush severely like i did in uh, last uh winter to about four feet and then it it will grow again here is my first row of grow boxes on sawhorses as a platform and I direct sowed beans in here when it was a hundred degree weather and as you can see they didn't survive but one plant did it's looking like it's on its last limb but we'll see what happens but I direct sowed beans in here they didn't come up uh, they may come up later they may come up here I don't know uh, here is Swiss chard that I've been growing in 100 degree weather and you can see the marigolds are taking a beating some more Swiss chard and some uh, marigolds here look like it's on its last leg. Here are Mexican petunias surrounding this elderberry bush. They were very pretty. Uh, I think I'll insert a little video that I took of them before I took the shade cloths off. Just want to show you how beautiful the Mexican petunias are. Now, they're usually like this during April and May and all through the summer, but because of the freeze that we got last February, they were slow to come back. But I'm so grateful and thankful that they're back. Here are some more Mexican petunias in full bloom. You see the butterfly? right there and there's some behind this apple tree and then we have more over here in front of this apple tree here is aronia berry they die back during the freeze um i thought this bush was dead but it's trying to come back here's another elderberry bush this one too will get trimmed back down to four feet and this is a brown turkey fig tree that died all the way down to one foot. It's doing very well and it's covered with little bitty figs. Hopefully, like you can see right here, that they will get big enough and ripe before it gets uh, too cold. Here is a saucer magnolia tree. I have it here, it's not for food. Uh, it's just here to attract pollinators and you can look close right here and you can see that it's getting ready to bloom again. It blooms about three times a year. When it gets cool, you'll see beautiful purplish uh, flowers. Here is another row 
of grow boxes on top of the sawhorse and wood. And you can see I have a lot of uh, marigolds. A little Swiss yard I try to grow during the summer. This Swiss yard is doing excellent. By the way, I just watered everything. Here are some zinnias that self-seeded. I love to leave zinnias and marigolds inside of uh, the beds that I grow them in or boxes that I grow them in so I can have some up until the first freeze. Uh, I apologize for the background noise. That's my neighbor. Uh, okay. He has to cut his lawn as he sees fit. And here are some beans that I planted in the middle of the heat wave in July just to see what they would do. And I had all of this covered up with shade cloths, but I just said, okay, it's below 100. It's time to let them sink or swim. And I took the shade cloths off of them Monday. Okay, so here is bed number one. You can see I have one tomato plant struggling here i'm going to insert some video where i pruned this plant to one stem and i found a hornworm on it okay i found the big hornworm i was taking the shade cloths off of my garden beds i'm gonna share this with you let me walk over here and show you the garden bed you can tell when you have some major damage see right here well, fat joker have been cleaning up. Uh, you let your guard down. Where there's one, there's probably another one. But I just try to hold on to a plant or two until it gets cooler. It's still in the upper 90s here. Look all over there, guys. So I'm just going to take the shade cloths off and just kind of watch the plants, prune them up. Maybe this one will still survive. We'll see. But I just picked it up. Let me say that again. I just picked the worm up. It squirted out some liquid that's green. See that right there? Um, so I'm going to go in the house and wash my hands and disinfect real good. But I'm going to relocate, wink, wink, that uh, horn worm. But th this plant is in bad shape. I hate to try to keep stuff alive during the extreme heat, but... I always end up trying to keep one alive. But I've got other tomato plants started. So let me go and get this shade cloth off. What will be what will be. The t at least the temperatures are cooling at night to around the upper 70s. So the plants and the crops will get a, a break. Okay. Just want to share that with you. And in this bed here, there are some more um, zinnias coming up, Japanese sorrel right there, and marigolds and uh, purslane. Very nutritious, loaded with omega-3, more so than in salmon. Here is okra in the next bed, bed number two. And by the way, all those little purple flowers, those are, excuse me, mosquito. Those are society garlic blooming. And then I have a couple of okra plants. And I've got, look like aphid eggs. Yep, that's what that is. I'm gonna take the water hose and blast that closer. When I finish this video, it's a good blast of water will get those. And I see some more here. I'll do the same thing. So this is how I get rid of aphids. Just blast it with water. It took me years to figure out I didn't need to put any sprays or oils or anything on it. Just blast it with water and drown it. Trust me, if you keep doing that, you will get the aphids off. Since I came back out to water uh, those aphids, blast those aphids off, I remembered another issue that I had with this uh, elevated raised garden bed that I bought from a big store, grocery store, that starts with an A. Um, they were cheaply made and too heavy for um, one bag of uh, soil, potty mix. So it, the bottom fell off and it fell through. 
but I put drug it over here to keep it in the shade because there are some impatience that were dying back. And this is where I grew my stevia, most of it. And some of it is still trying to grow. So I'm going to keep this shaded and see if I can save these few stevia plants, bring it to the greenhouse and over the winter. And also I knew that the impatience wouldn't survive in extreme heat, like a temperature of 100, 600, 7. So uh, I shaded it over here behind the jujube tree and uh, see if I can get a little bit more um, beauty uh, from them before they die back. And another thing I want to show you that I think I told you, I might have said it in another video, uh, that I was blessed to receive the gift for my birthday from Debbie Epps, and I'm going to share with you. Uh, I'm preparing uh, that gift for my Here seed. It is. It's a beautiful, extra large, elevated, raised garden bed, and I water it like every three days because you want to keep it moist. And you can see where I've been throwing banana peels in here, you know, so they can dry and compost and add a source of potassium to the uh, soil here. But this bed eventually will be moved to my greenhouse. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, and I can't wait to put some of the seedlings that I'm growing inside the house into this beautiful elevated garden bed. Isn't that gorgeous? It's very roomy, too. And some more zinnias that self-seeded. And some right here. And those flowers are just blooming, so they're going to get real big and pretty and just be awesome when... Um, you know, everything else is dying out. Eggplant is struggling. There's one over there and one over there. This one over here died or is dying. And then right here, you see the little long stems. Let me see if I can go closer. That is chicory Italian uh, dandelion. Okay, let me go back out. And over here, I have echinacea. I think it was three or four plants I got on sale at Lowe's that were on life support for a dollar. They probably won't bloom until, well, let me take that back. Cause I think I see evidence of a bloom coming. Yep, sure is right there. So it'll bloom this year, but they will come back. They're perennial in my area. Just looking for some more. Just took the shade cloth off of them on Monday. Sweet potatoes have been struggling. But if you look at my previous videos, you'll see that they're going to start taking off now and go all the way up this trellis here. And when I harvest them, I'm hoping, like in previous years, that we get some good sweet potatoes. And by the way, I come out here and trim some of the little leaves and saute them with onion and olive oil and a little garlic. And it tastes just like spinach with a little sweetness to it. Here is a um, Texas blueberry that was under shade. You can see it's struggling a little bit. Let me go closer. You can see, and I said blueberry, but I meant to say blackberry, as you can see indicated on that tag. But I think it'll take off and do okay uh, once the weather cools. So now I'm gonna head on over to this garden bed right here. Let me walk up under it and let you just see these three humongous trees are sun glow nectarine. It's really, really tall, taller than the jujube trees. And then I have two, on dwarf stock, I have two red haven peach right here and right here. I also have some gooseberries little bitty small starter saplings that I got from Stark Brothers. There's more purslane in that little back black pot, Mexican petunia in the green pot there, and then another gooseberry. Let me go around here and show you in this red pot. And since I'm here, I'll show you the third platform base. And I always keep a five gallon bucket so I can put weeds and whatever plants that aren't any good. And you can see that the weather took a toll on my four year old strawberry plants. So these crowns will have to be separated like this one. This will go into the compost 
this will go into the compost. You know, I think this is a weed. It is, I need to get that big stem out of there. And this is why I keep little buckets close by so that I can put compost in it. So I'll take those strawberry clowns. And if you didn't know, strawberries only last about three years. And that's why you have to multiply them. And that's what I did with these smaller ones. They were from offsprings from the mother crown. Okay, so all of these will come up and I'll do those on another day. I won't continue with the tour. Okay, here are my two cherry trees. One here and then one here. And they are, I believe, two years old. And they bloom for the first time this spring, but the blooms didn't cross pollinate with a compatible tree because I uh, had a cherry tree to die. And so I'll show you later in this video, the Stella cherry trees that I bought dormant that aren't doing anything, but they're still alive. But a Stella will cross pollinate I believe this is a Windsor Swede and a Rainier cherry so uh, hopefully next year or the year after we should get cherries okay then I'm gonna show you the the fourth platform I sold some beans in here a few weeks ago I see one is trying to come up I see one is trying to come up here um, we'll see what happens these are newer strawberries. Or they're about like two years old, and that's why they're still viable. And, of course, that's purse lane. And I sold some beans. I'm just looking for them in these this uh, box as well. So here and here, hopefully they'll come up. This is the last bed that I made, and it is an okra bed. And... I will come out and harvest okra twice a day now. And I'm gonna clear up the bottom so that I can see what's hiding up under there. I'll probably, that'll be my job tomorrow morning. And I see I have a couple of uh, eggplant that are struggling trying to make it. This is the last tree that I have fruit on. It's struggled. This is my Fuyu persimmon. It struggled and the birds you can see they came in birds and squirrel all the little bags that you see on the ground is where I bagged up the fruit the few pieces that they left me I see one piece of fruit over there that's hiding they didn't get that one so I don't think I'm gonna get any Fuyu persimmons because the tree struggled when it had a very low temperature in February three degrees and I see this is a piece that birds or something been eating on. I'll just leave it. They got to eat too. I'm not tripping because I wasn't expecting any fruit at all. So now I'm going to turn around. I'm going to step back so you can get a big view. I see one bag still holding on. One bag of fruit. Uh, but this is a beautiful tree. It's my favorite tree in the food forest because of the way that it looks. That Asian uh, Japanese feel to it. Okay, right here are my mimosa trees. I'm proud of these two trees. You can see them in the ground. And I'm very proud of them because I grew them from seeds. And they have a beautiful silk flower. And look how that leaf is, excuse me, look out how that branch is extending all the way over there. Okay. And I, I heard there are some like trainers that you can buy and and try to maybe train this to go up a little higher i'll see if i can do that but i want to share with you this is the pear tree that i put in the ground where my gala apple tree froze last year and i have mexican petunias and i'm going to put some comfrey down here in the fall and here are my purple cone flowers and, and it's just a few of them left and I will be gathering seeds and then there are a few sprinkles of Mexican petunia. 
in there. I just heard a bird or a squirrel behind me. But anyway, let me back up and show you. Um, here's an apple tree in the ground. Um, you can see my uh, muscadine vines right all across there. Okay, it's something bothering me out here. <laughs> something flying all around me. I don't know what it is. It's big, whatever it is. I'm sorry, I'll edit that out. Here is the pear tree that Bree and Brian and I harvested all the pears except the ones at the top. The squirrels got them. And here's the apple tree in, in a container and another apple tree over there in a container and then a, a, a Santa Rosa plum right next to it. And my grapes didn't do well at all. You can see from this end all the way to here were Concord grapes. They had black rot and the birds, squirrels, or whatever ate them anyway. Check this out, guys. <laughs> Look at this apple tree. Now, we've harvested all the apples, and now it's trying to bloom again. It won't make. It'll make an apple, but it won't be ripe until in time enough for the frost. Okay, so I'm going to lift this branch up and get behind here so I can show you the beautiful Mexican petunias and comfrey around the trees. Here is some uh, volunteer asparagus. Look how beautiful that comfrey is growing around this volunteer pecan tree. It's huge. I think it's four years old. That's the uh, white, white Texas Star Hop Biscuits, and we will get some seed pods from it. All along here is comfrey, and you can see some of it is just dying in the heat, but the roots in the ground, I assure you, are still viable, and this is where I will be pulling up some of the comfrey to take cuttings to give to my subscribers. That's a pawpaw tree here, one over here, and then the third one is right here. I'm expecting fruit from it in a couple of years. Okay, three pawpaw trees and a sea of comfrey. Mexican petunia growing in this apple tree that's blooming <laughs> like it's nuts. Okay, here I have two methylene plums, one in the ground, one in a the container. They both fruited, but they couldn't hold on to the fruit uh, this past spring. But I'm anticipating, you can look at the girth of the trees. I think they will hold on to it next year. And I'm gonna show you where the third tree is. Here is the third methylene plum. I mean, the girth on that tree is huge. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't grow a fruit tree in a container. I had a lot of fruit on this tree last spring. It's the first tree in the food forest to produce fruit. And then I have two apple trees here. And you saw Brian and Bria and I uh, harvesting the fruit. There's still one delicious apple right there that I couldn't reach and I'm just gonna leave it there and see what it does and they're in the ground and here is my humongous Texas red star hibiscus when it cools down it will continue to put on more leaves for me to harvest to uh, make tea for your blood pressure and there are lots of seed pods so if you didn't get any from the hundreds of seeds that i sent out last winter maybe you can win some <coughs> in my uh, monday night live chats and i'll send you some seeds too but the flowers are still coming it's just not covered as much as it normally is before it gets to be 100 degrees isn't it gorgeous Here's another tree right here. It is my American Yates persimmon. It has one piece of fruit. So far, uh, the squirrels or the birds haven't attacked it yet. It's an astringent fruit, and you have to wait until it goes through a um, frost or freeze so that it won't um, uh, hurt your mouth with that astringent uh, feel. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on over. Oh, and let me share with you. Here is the, uh, in this tea bed with the Texas Star Hibiscus. Let me walk around here so you can see how far or how big this bed is. It's, it's huge. It has a, a lot of uh, flowers on it. But this is peppermint. It always dies back in 100 degree plus weather, but it will come back real strong when it gets a little bit cooler. So now I'm gonna take you inside the greenhouse. Okay, so I'm in the greenhouse. 
and this is the large uh, concrete bed that I resized and you can see here the eggplant is doing well the okra no egg feds on it it's doing really well I watered it this morning and uh, we'll be gathering okra from it pretty soon let's go back to the fruit trees this is a soursop here is another soursop here is a calamondin tree it did really bad through the freeze but it hung on and survived and you can see these light leaves are new ones here is a Awarian Satsuma, it's doing well. Here is a Lisbon Lemon. And then I have a Meyer Lemon over there and a Grapefruit Tree right there. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven citrus trees in the greenhouse. They will stay here all winter and the two sour socks will be the only ones that have to be moved into the house. Here we have pepper plants with society garlic. I uh, got a couple of uh, the okra plants, one here, one there. And the rest of these are peppers. This is a about a dollar plant from Lowe's on life support. Purple echinacea. And this is my Aunt Lois's uh, cold hardy hibiscus. When she passed away, I went by her house after the funeral and got some seeds. I tried them, so start them last year and they got infected with spider mites. So I started off. That's why I always, I never plant all of my seeds, especially rare seeds. In case something doesn't uh, come up or doesn't survive, I'm able to uh, start it again. So I'm praying that I'll be able to get this one going because it would just be a wonderful tribute to my aunt who was my mother's last surviving sibling and she gardened guys. She had a beautiful garden up until she died. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you to the prayer garden. Before I show you the prayer garden, let me show you the brown turkey fig. Half of the plant died and it just has grown. I mean, we really uh, had some delicious figs. It's still loaded with lots of figs. I'm hoping that I'll be able to harvest these before, you know, it gets real cold. And this branch right here, that's leaning into, see, I'm gonna straighten that up. See right there? That's leaning into the um, Asian pear trees. One is Asian, one isn't, but I'm going to air layer that big branch. I'm waiting for it to get just a little bit cooler. I promised my uh, subscribers that I'm gonna do it before October. And they're gonna ask me in the live if I did it. But I definitely going, going to attempt air layering for the very first time. But look how big that fig tree grew back all the way over here. I don't give it anything but compost tea fresh compost and fermented comfrey tea twice a I'm year. I'm standing outside of the greenhouse. I wanna show you how I lifted the, the majority of the cover on the greenhouse up so that that okra and those peppers back there can get more uh, sunlight. And as soon as the temperature drops about 85 degrees, I'll take the cover completely off but these tropical trees need a little protection from uh, a harsh sun, okay? All right. And here are some more uh, Mexican petunias. And I'm gonna sit down because I'm getting a little bit out of breath over here in my prayer garden. And I just wanna show you guys that whatever God has for you, he has for you because this is all of the banana plants uh, that I thought 
it was the end. They all died back, and I made a hoo culture and made a prayer garden here, and they just started coming up one by one. And I think the last time I counted, I really don't remember, but I know it's over 20 in here, and I'm gonna be pulling up the few little plants that survived and composting them. And these hanging plants, it was just so hot, I just put them here where they could be shaded by the banana plants. But I'm gonna start separating some of these banana plants because they're too close together. And uh, I'm gonna put some of them in other areas of the food forest, but I still come out here and meditate and pray in this prayer area. I have a mulberry tree, a wild mulberry tree and a plum tree over there in that corner. And I had dahlias, but they died back when it was uh, 100 degrees. And the dahlia right over here is still trying to hang on and give them a few flowers. And right over here, is my sweet potato alley and you can see it's doing well because this is a little shaded area right in here and so i'm expecting to get a lot of sweet potatoes from these one two three 17 gallon pots this is leaf mulch here and my composter here there are a couple things i didn't show you and i'm gonna show them to you right asparagus i got it this year from Stark Brothers. I think it's called New Jersey Asparagus. And this is my gorilla cart that I turned into a herb garden. It was just too hot, guys. I still see a little sage, lemon balm, sage right there trying to hang in here. More lemon balm coming up at the bottom. I'm gonna get it in here. I'm gonna prune all of this stuff off real low. And then um, uh, deadhead all of the marigolds and uh, let them just subseed in here. And here is uh, a pepper plant that I got from Lowe's for a dollar. It was on life support. And it's a little mini bell pepper in there as well. But these are really hot. I enjoyed them. I, I broiled me some fish and okra and uh, some of these cayenne peppers. It was delicious. Right here are some petunias. Uh, that are in a big container with my Miho Satsuma. Uh, this one struggled a bit, but I do have some nice sized fruit on it. I don't count them guys until, you know, until I get ready to harvest because every day seemed like at one point it was dropping fruit. Here are my last two trees, my Stella cherries. They don't look too good, but I don't expect them to. They're still alive when I scrape the bark back it's still green so we'll see what happens okay i think by george that is so pretty and this is george the owl used to light up at night but it's old but isn't that pretty such a beautiful that's a thumbnail there this concludes the video of the tour of the end of the summer of the food forest after having extreme temperatures without any rain for weeks at a time. We had temps over 100 degrees. I think the highest, this was uh, 107, I may be wrong. But uh, yeah, it suffered a lot and I've got a lot of cleaning up to do like most of you are doing now in your gardens, but it's too hot. I'm going to wait. A couple more weeks and then I'll do my cleanup and I'll start transplanting the seedlings that I'm growing inside my home. Thank you all again for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day. Grow your own, eat your own. It's not all you can do with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. See you real soon. Bye now.